Hey guys, welcome back. We are doing something, um, well, we've done it before, but we're going to just do it differently now. We have an F1 pad here. It's a blank F1 pad, that's why it's not lit up. And I'm going to take some stuff and chop it up in here and show you how you can use, you can't see the 12 at the moment, just from the camera angle, because I need two hands, that's why we're static. I'm um, going to show you guys how you can really use that to utilize, you know, to scratch different things. Not that I can scratch mix by no means. So what's great, right now I have a, a cut and breaks thing loaded up here, right? So, uh, the first thing I see here, it's called AW. I'm going to pull that up here to the top so I can test it out. Hopefully you can kind of see the waveforms in there. Get to the right deck. So, so just as that thing sits. But here's one thing we're going to do differently though. Hopefully, um, let's see if I can zoom in here for a second guys. So you can see what we're talking about. Okay, that should work. So I do want to grab that, right? But let me look at it very closely. Look where that thing starts, right? I want, when I hit that button, man, I want the time to be like bang on. I don't want to screw around. So, all I got to do, use my jog wheel. Right? On my controller. And let me shed some light on this for a second here for you. So, on an S4 controller. And presto, we have some lights. You're seeing there's an in and an out. So I press my in. Take my snap mode off. Now press my in. That's important by the way guys. That you need to make sure snap mode is turned off. Because with snap mode engaged, when I when I press that and then I try to do my loop. I'm going to go to the uh, the closest beat grid, which I don't want to do. So, I'm doing my in, and then I'm going to do, use my jog wheel. I'm going to go back to the screen because now that you know where everything is, it's not really that important. Sorry for the squeaky tripod. I'm not usually <laughs> using a tripod. I'm sure this is probably aggravating as hell. So, I have my in. And I want my out to be right there. It's, that's done. So now I play that. I've got that loop. Right? So now that I have that, I want to go down. And hopefully we can get focused here. So what I'm going to do right now, press capture. And when I press capture, as you can see here, see where it says CA? That means channel A, if I turn it. Channel B, it's flashing. Channel C, because I have an input going on there. Or my loop recorder. So. I can capture from all the sources that I have a track or a loop recorder. I want to capture from B because I'm on B. Let go. It's flashing 8. All I'm doing at this point here is real simple. Press the button. Pick the color that I like. There's multiple colors to choose from. Purple works. It's kind of a pinkish color on my end. So now that I have that, right? Press capture, let go, and now I have it. But one of the things, I don't want that as a loop. So, and if you look up here and focus in, it's a loop, and there it is. It's this part right here that tells you it's a loop. So what you need to do 
Okay, so we're gonna go back down to the controller. And serve for the shoddy camera. One day I'll have a good editing program or just I'll hire someone to do this stuff for me. So we're gonna go over here. And if you look on the controller, it's it says all the stuff. So type. When you press type, you turn. See how that goes through all that states? So, PL stands for play mode. When it's green, it's a loop. Green for go. Go around in circles. Blue is a one shot. And up on the screen, I'm not going to bother moving it, but you see an arrow where that loop was before? It's an arrow indicating it's a one shot. So, all of a sudden, I can just press it like that now. It's a one shot. If I turn my turn, put my turntable on, and give me a second here, guys. Try to uh, get an angle here that you can kind of appreciate everything that's going on here. And I switch this over to the uh, time code mode for my deck. Now when I press that, and I don't have anything. Let's figure this out. Now as you can see, my pad went white, so there we go. Time code again. Put in 45. So even when better, if I change the type, because put it in trigger mode. And you know what? I might claim to be some expert, by no means, because I can't scratch mix. But for someone who can scratch mix, when you understand what you have in front of you with a setup like this, it becomes very apparent you can do a lot of stuff because you have 16 pads that you can run loops. You know what I mean? Like, let me just, just to give an idea about a loop. So I'm gonna take this break that's here I'm gonna just drag it into a pad. That's another way I can do it too. So that's a loop. Change the type. Make sure it's a loop, so it's a loop now. And then when I That's the problem, because the loop's trying to synchronize with other stuff, right? But that's okay, because I can go in here, and I can change the speed of it. Then of course, when you have effects, and this is just to kind of give you an idea of when you really know what you're doing with all this stuff. Let's go in here. I can say I want effects just on this and not on these ones here. Hold it down. Then I can 
take the same break. And let's say I want to put it somewhere else. Okay. And I take it from down here. Kind of the tempo it's supposed to be on anyways, right? So this makes more sense. Go back into the time code mode. I'm not really feeling it, to be honest, right now. But you guys get the idea. Hopefully this video has been informative. Um, hopefully it gives you some inspiration because don't let the fact that my scratch mixing sucks throw you off by no stretch of the imagination because it's not my thing. Personally, I find scratch mixing a little bit outdated. But that's why I tried to uh, show some old school guys how to take the new and blend them together. And that's what you're going to get. So, I will talk to you guys all real, real soon. Ciao for now.